Hello. So today I want to show you something I've been creating uh, or designing for a while. Um, I'm quite proud of it. I'd love to get your input. Um, tell me what you like, what you dislike, advice I could do or advice give. So what it is, is a brewing controller. I don't know how many of you uh, are like me. You brew outside. So I brew in the shed. Um, and the temperature is all over the place. Uh, one moment it could be freezing cold, next be boiling hot. Now, unfortunately, with heat, I can't really do much about that, although I'm thinking. Whereas with the cooling, I use an immersion heater. This isn't a fish tank one. This is more expensive one from a brewing shop, which realistically is probably exactly the same. Obviously, it has a rubber bung, and it has, uh, or I've put a uh, like an airlock on there, uh, a little um, eight mil eight or 10 mil little connector and a standard airlock. I put a bit of rubber tube on there. So that way this can sit on there nicely, creates my seal. And the whole reason why I've put the adapter and the bit of tube in there is I don't want to keep pushing in the airlock into the rubber bung and eventually it's just going to corrode and, and, and go all bad. Whereas at least this way, the, what, the thing that's going to corrode or go bad will be that small little rubber section, the tube, which I can just replace. Anyway, so I put this inside my bucket hole in the middle and leave it going. And it's great, and it works really well. Um, trying to regulate these with temperatures, absolutely nightmare. So um, yeah, good luck with that. The other problem is because I'm bringing the shed, I then think, well, is it gonna be finished in five days or seven days? And I've got to go down there, take a hydrometer reading, write it down, wait 24 hours, do it again, and sometimes three or four days. And I'm not gonna stand there and just stare at that airlock, seeing for a mere movement. So I thought, well, I want something that can do this for me, can alert, uh, me what's going on. So I built this. It's a small little plastic box. It has a three pin plug in it to go into the mains, three pin output plug, which my immersion heater will go in, two plugs for sensors, a a, a, an LED and a small little OLED screen. And the whole idea is that I would need to install a thermo well into the bucket. Now what a thermo well is, it's an amazing invention. Drill a small little hole in your bucket or boiler, whatever you want to use. And then you push this in and then drop the nut. And this, oh, I can do the nut in. This now allows you, or has a bung in it, like so in that bucket. And it allows you, and it's hollow, to then put a temperature sensor in. So for example, this temperature sensor can slide in there like that, and that now reads the temperature from inside your brew without having any contacts. There's no leads dangling in or anything like that. And it's really good. So I have this sensor on a connector, which I've all installed, and then the three and a half mil jack, that plugs in there. Obviously it's coiled up at the moment, but that can expand. Goes into the T for temperature. And this will now monitor the temperature of the brew. Uh, and it will show on the screen what temperature the brew is. And uh, when it notices it's too cold, it will turn on the heater, turn on the power to here. So you can use this immersion heater, you can use anything, it makes no difference. Brew belts, underfloor, underfloor. Um, oh, the old under heaters. And it just works. Now, I've pre programmed the set temperature. So I programmed this to do 28 degrees Celsius. Um, in a future model, I can then make this a little bit larger, put three buttons on there so you can then change the temperature every single time. But at the moment, it's only a prototype, only me playing with it. Then what you have, another three and a half mil sensor, which goes into the B for bubbles. And then on your airlock, you have this little sensor, which clips on there like that. And it sends out a little light beam across the actual bit of plastic. A water can, uh, or the, the light beam can go through the water and it's as if it's not there. But as soon as the water isn't there, i.e. a bubbles come through, it moves the light beam in another direction and the sensors can't see the light, so it flags it. And the device is told to uh, check for this every quarter of a second or 0.2 of a five of a second. So if you just see, literally see air constantly going every 0.25 of a second, it will classify that as one bubble. And what it will do is it then keeps, counts how many bubbles it's had for the last hour and it uploads it to the internet, to a, a company called ThingSpeak. And every minute it uploads the temperature. 
So on my mobile phone or my computer, I can go to a website and I can see a graph of the temperature to make sure it's still at that 28 degrees and also to see how many bubbles it's got. And the start, it can be around about two to 500 bubbles and then it goes slowly, slowly down. And the way I do it now, and I've, I've, I've done eight, nine washes through this, um, is once I get 10 hours and of each hour reporting 10 or less bubbles, I think that's done. I will then go to the bucket, take a hydrometer reading, leave it 24 hours, and every single time it isn't moving, it is done. I could probably do it under 10 hours and under 10 bubbles, but that suits me. So this is it. It is, say, just a prototype at the moment. Uh, works quite well. Now, for those of you who are interested, let's have a look at how I did it. So we'll f first thing is the design. So here's another one I made. So I made three of them. If I take off the back, it's just an ordinary socket. Same as you have on your wall around your house. And in this side here, we've got a printer circuit board and some other components. Now, what I did, this is the printer circuit board. Now, this is designed by me. Never been made by anyone else before in the world. I took the box, I measured it, saw the corners, the curves, and then drew a PCB that would fit inside it perfectly. Worked out what components I need, a bit of monitoring and everything else on CAD software then uh, rendered the, the uh, where I'd want switches, what switches I'd want, input, output, relays, 230 volts to 12 volts, uh, sorry, 5 volts DC regulators. Um, then we've got the um, actual controller itself, which is an ESP32 device, you name it. And then from those, uh, that, 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 that uh, schematic of uh, components, I then had to assign components, physical, real-life components, from that, you can export it to what's called a, a net list, which can then be imported into the CAD software. Um, and that will then dump all the components on the desk for you. And then you can move them around and then start laying tracks uh, above tracks, which are on the top of the board, below tracks, which are the bottom of the board, and through holes where you can actually get a track to go from the top through down to the bottom. Uh, so obviously, unfortunately, you can't have roundabouts or, or, or anything like that. So uh, you have to jump them all around. Now, once that PCB was then designed, I uh, you generate uh, what's called the Gerber files, which are basically files which say the dimensions of everything, what, where, the thickness of whatever it is, and it, it puts them all into some files. You then send those files off to a fabrication company. They can load it into their computers, and then um, through like a CNC machine, that will then go to actually plate the PCBs, drill holes, put screen printing on there everywhere. And then uh, next thing, PCBs come out. And about two to four weeks later, I get a package in a post uh, with my 10 PCBs. Uh, I then get to work uh, soldering all the components on, the surface mount components and through hole, and pray that I designed it right. Because if I get anything wrong, it's dead. I have to throw it in the bin and start from scratch again. And once I found out the issue. So there you go. There's the PCB. Now what we'll do is um, we'll get a bit of a close-up of how the screen works. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see from there. Okay, so let's plug this in. There we go. So booting up to so me, it's the brewing controller. Then it tells me which thing speak channels. So that's brew number one. So I've got multiple channels that uh, it connects to, and this one's brew one. This one over here is brew controller three, so that connects to brew channel three, so they won't interact. As you saw when it first started up, it was 85 degrees Celsius, and that's just an issue with the code. When it first boots up, it, uh, I'm getting it to display the temperature before it actually reads the temperature, and that's just an issue on code. So right now, as you can see, it's showing it's 19.7 degrees Celsius. It thinks it's too cold, because I've set it to 28 degrees, so it's now saying that it's heating, and the red light is on saying it's heating. Uh, in the next version, I'm going to be removing where it says heating, because there's no point because the red light works. Bubbles is zero, because it doesn't count any bubbles. And that countdown there is how many seconds until it uploads to ThingSpeak with the next temperature. And then once it's done that and done it successfully, it will say, uploaded.
If it doesn't work, i.e. it can't connect to my wireless or there's an issue with the server, it will come up saying failed. So that's it, uh, nice and simple. It's the temperature probe. So obviously if I put my on my hand, you will then see that heat now rising. And I keep holding until it gets to 28 degrees and then that light should go off and also its heating will then turn off because it will know it's at a nice temperature. As I said before, this can only heat, it's only got one plug. Uh, who knows in the future, I might design one that's got two. So if it gets too hot, it can turn on something. If it gets too cold, it can turn on something. Uh, who knows, this is just a prototype. There we go, there we go, and it switched off. That's simple, and with bubbles, so I'm gonna put this in the, in the way of the light so it can, it can detect it. See, one bubble, and I'm holding it there, it still says one bubble. Remove it, still one. I'll just wait for it to finish uploading. There we go, two, three. And if you then do it really quickly, this is only doing quarter of a second. Now the one thing it does do is while it is uploading and it says uploaded, it is still counting bubbles and it is still adjusting the temperature. Um, it will not fault or when it's trying to upload, it still works in the background. The only reason I stopped was obviously, you're not gonna see me doing it um, or seeing the screen update when it says uploaded on the screen. That's it really, it's quite simple. Not really much else to say about it. So future version will probably be, this is 100 by 100 by 50 high. Um, there's a box I've seen that's uh, 120 by 200 by 57 high. And then what that could do then is that could then hose, hold uh, some buttons over here where you can like press it and do up and down for changing the temperature. Um, that you want to set your brew at. I could then move the screen up to here as well. The light could go there. This would be rotated around. It'll look a little bit better. Um, but again, that's just a potential future version. And then after that, I'm looking at integrating an SCR. So this could be plugged into a T500 boiler and it would then actually convert the T500 boiler to a brewer. Um, admittedly, you would still need to install that thermo well into the, uh, or drill a hole inside of the, um, T500 boiler, so that way it will turn it into a fermenter. So uh, that way, yeah, you could ferment from it. And then with this controller, it would then do the temperature regulation with a built-in SDR. You could do the power control. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, I'd love to know what you, if you think there'd be any other good things to, to include into this uh, and to make a, a better version and something that's even more awesome. But thank you for watching. And uh, I hope you like the video.